Hey guys, I want to talk to you about databases and slow queries and things like that. So I'm a consultant and sometimes you have a client and the client says something like, help, our platform is falling over or our platform is unstable or things are really slow and we don't want them to be or um, there's a database connection error, something like that. Of course, I would say I can help, and we go and have a look. So yeah, it's okay. It could be a whole variety of things. It could be a genuine network <laughs> issue, as a as a colleague pointed out. Though many a time there is something wrong with the database, and assuming they have like you know a lamp and they're using a database, assuming they're using a database, they're the, the database can be a bottleneck when the company's product is successful, which is a great problem to have, a great problem. When you're scaling, when, you're, when, when there's a spike in traffic, the database might fall over. A great problem to have. And, um, and I'm sure you remember WordPress sites having, you know, going to a, a popular blog and you'll see an error establishing a database connection. And the reason was because WordPress didn't really handle the spike so well. And it took them a while to um, get like some sort of caching going. And then I think that that solved the problem for the most part with, with WordPress, a, a good old fashioned cache. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, in this cloud world that we're living in, you might say, oh, you can just scale, scale your database with the infinite cloud resources that we have. But in practice, it doesn't work very well, especially if your access or your if you're having a lot of writes, they call them uh, DMLs, database manipulations or something like that, updates, deletes, what have you. If you're having a lot of 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 um, activity on your writer, you are going to have trouble scaling, especially if you have a very big database because it takes time to vertically scale. Yes, you can horizontally scale for reads. You can't. Uh, scale for writes very easily. There's also um, a recent uh, video, and I think it's kind of like one of these well, uh, kind of one of these well-known things, like the fact that RDS doesn't scale very well, is the fact that like MySQL 8 is, is actually slower than MySQL 5, bizarre. So there might be an application out there that was running fine, just dandy, until MySQL 8 came along. Oh dear, oh no. So as a consultant, you know, um, the, I, I think what's quite what's quite interesting is the way that we interact with the, the client, right? Because often we just need to log into their uh, database and poke around the performance schema. But of course, that needs a lot of trust. And you know, we're externals. We're, you know, they just met you. They can't let you have access to the the the, the you know the crown jewels. You know, there's personal identifier information in there. You, you need to have security controls. And if they didn't have them, we would, would like make sure we had that. Uh, we would advise them that they should have them. So, unfortunately, you know, I I don't usually log into the database just because I'm not allowed to. What I can do is get AWS console access. And to be honest, one of the great things about AWS is the read access is quite well done. Of course, it kind of falls down when you want to save a query or share a query or something like that. But the, the AWS console is really great for um, allowing external people to come in and have a look what's going on and helping that business. Uh, and, and like, if you don't have AWS console, you have slow logs. And that's where I started you know, talking about slow logs. So um, AWS console is, let, let's, let's assume you have AWS console and you have read access. Hopefully you have uh, something called performance insights and that can tell you some really good stuff like, for example, where the constraints are with the database. Really good. The, the what, what, one hack or whatever, one little crib note for you guys is that um, the show max vCPU, this dotted line tells you if, um, if the queries are within the sort of resources that have been allocated for, for it. So if it's, a, if, if it's above that dotted line, you know that you have some sizing issue right off the bat, right? But here, I want to talk to you about slow logs. Slow logs, and um, there's another option um, called log queries not using indexes. That, that's kind of 
interesting. You probably want to enable that too. Um, but it, all in all, I often find to myself that, um, yeah, and I have a blog post here actually all about the details about uh, analyzing slow logs. You want to use something like Log Insights. Details in the blog. Read the blog. Tell me if it's cool or not. But I just wanted to mention that, like, say you have the slow logs and you're working with the slow logs and you see in the slow logs what is slow and you can prioritize what to fix. But often fixing that query um, is not it's not really easy. Like, you, I, I mentioned indexes. There could be unused index. Like, everyone says, oh, you just need an index. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but often there is no, um, I mean, often there is an index, but it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, do the job right there's, there's more complicated issues at play so what 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 you really uh, often need to do and it's much much harder is, is to fix the back and fix the api um rewrite the query this is really really hard um i mean actually it's not that difficult to, to rewrite the query uh, you know you select what you need use uh open ai chat gpt um, there's also some olama sql coders you can use um, you, you, it's actually pretty easy to optimize the SQL query. Actually, I mean, I mean, using the right tools, but then making the code change is really tricky because you you need to bypass the the, the ORM. Um, you, you, I mean, what, what one thing that you'll find is that you 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 see the inefficient SQL query. You have the efficient SQL query, but where in the code do you change it? Because in this world that we live in, with lots of microservices, you don't even know where. Um, you know, there's no source mapping back to the code. Um, I do talk about this in my blog, by the way. Details in the blog. So you can't even find the code to change sometimes. You know, it's not not that easy. And then you have to come up with a process to make sure that this query doesn't affect something else. You know, it depend, can, could depend on how that database is used. If you have multiple tenants, multiple customers, different access patterns, it's a very complicated thing. Um, so... I'm just raising the issue so that maybe you can comment below and give me some advice because these are the kind of things I'm running into. Now, if you can't fix the back end, um, you know, what else can you do? Well, these are the CDN. That's where we started. That's where we end. Um, you could use maybe a web application firewall um, to, 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 to limit the, the kind of queries, the expensive queries that are coming in that trigger all sorts of problems in the, in the database. You can get these things called um, uh, RDS proxies, link in the blog. Um, um, and they 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 promise to like rewrite the um, queries. I think I think that's the promise. To be honest, I've yet to try that. You know, if you've had good um, experiences with proxies, do let me know. Comments below. Comment below. And of course, last but not least, is things like a circuit breaker pattern or a rate limiter, where you just effectively smooth out the, the spikes. Allow the t um, I mean, rate limiter you smooth out the circuit. The circuit breaker is kind of like a mechanism. Uh, like your home circuit breaker, where you sort of allow the database to recover instead of just making it completely fall down, right? So that's my little blog video about databases. I would love to get your feedback and your comments below, and especially have a look at this blog post, which is more targeted um, and tells you how to maybe use the Pocona tools, which is pretty fab to, to optimize a database. So yeah. Please like the video, please subscribe for more, see you in the next video, bye.